I supposed to have an opening statement or something? I have none. We won. And I'm very happy about that. Talk about Sindarius and how you could just put him in last second. Yeah, he's great. He stays ready. You know, he sits next to Sam all game. Every defensive possession, he, he literally asks, what are we doing? Why are we doing it? Uh, he's For a young kid, he's the most engaged kid. And it's great that you feel comfortable putting him in any situation. That was good for him. I thought Shea, our other young kid down the stretch, made just two huge layups for us, you know, uh, when the shot clock was going down. It's nice to have guys that can make plays. Uh, and then Pat, you know, what can you say? You guys didn't uh, trail big this game like you did last game. It had a similar feel in that you didn't seem to really pull away. No, it's funny. It was a very frustrating game. I, I just felt like, you know, there were so many chances for us. We got good shots that didn't go in. Uh, you know, we had that, it, we were stuck on nine. It felt like the whole game. And you feel like if we could make a couple shots and get it to 15, they played last night, you know, we would pull away, but we just never could. And give them credit. I mean, they, uh, that's a tough physical basketball team, big team. And uh, it's good to see that we could, we could play against that. Tom, last 10 games of the year, what are you looking for other than the position and the just we're just pushing, just winning. You know, we just gotta keep winning games, and um, we don't even look at positioning. We just look at if you keep winning, positioning will happen. And then you know, at the very end, I guarantee you, one of you guys will tell us who we're playing uh, and where we're playing, and, and we'll be ready for that. You know, um, the other thing is is continuity. You know, we gotta get that the new guys um, integrated. Um, you know, we're, we're going to use small lineups with the second unit and big lineups, you know, and, and we don't have that yet. And so we have a lot of work to do, and we don't have a lot of time. You know, that's, I, I credit our guys. Like today, we went hard and shoot around. You know, a couple of guys whispered that it may have been a practice. Uh, but we have to right now. We have no choice, uh, and our guys understand that, and so that's good. Uh, Doc, you're seven of your last eight years have won, and today you had to let uh, a Pacers score more than 20 points. Can you talk about your team within the last eight games? Um, we're just playing well, you know. Um, but we're not playing great, which is, is a good sign. Like, we're playing well enough to win. Uh, we've played great in stretches during the game. Uh, but there's a better team in there, you know, and, and we know that. Um, and, and we're going to get it up. Doc, I know you said you're not looking at positioning, but you guys are two out of the four seed at this point. Uh, I didn't even know that. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> is this sort of, I mean, are you guys in a position, I know there was belief in this organization, this team could make the playoffs. Are you guys even better positioned than, than you imagine? I don't know if I imagine anything, honestly. Um, you know, I said it, I, I've been 10 games into the year. I remember telling our coaches, man, this, this is going to be, down the stretch, it's going to be nine, 10 teams all close, you know. I honestly thought the, the one team would pull away, you know, and they haven't. Golden State, you know, Denver is right with them. Um, but other than that, it's about it's played out the way we thought it would. Doc, there's a lot of similarities between you and the Pacers team. Kind of a next man up mentality. Yeah. No, no true go-to guy, no true superstar. Yeah. Uh, how much respect do you have for the job Nate McMillan oh, has, has done in, in Major, the I, you know, I have respect for Nate in general. Um, and he, he's one of those coaches that has been coaching great, like really great for a long time. And it just seems like no one talks about it. You know, I guess he was doing it in Portland, did a terrific job, uh, you know, small media market maybe. Then he goes to Indiana, does it again. And, and you know, it's, it's good that people are starting to talk about him because he's a fantastic coach. Uh, his teams play a lot like him. Uh, he was a tough physical player, and that's how his teams play. Um, Pat Beal, Hoops and Brews. Um, Doc, word came down today that you signed an um, extension. Can you just talk about what that means for this organization and this coaching going forward? Yeah, you know, I don't know. Um, it, it, it's, it's been kind of agreed upon, and we didn't make a big deal of it. I, I thought I had to just today because all the, the, the noise that was out there, and I wanted to get that out. I wanted to talk more about basketball. So we'll see. You know, um, we got a lot of work to do. Uh, but I like where we stand as an organization, that's for sure. Doc, when you look at the schedule for this home stretch, it was like, I think 16 days, eight home games, you guys won seven of eight. Is that about as well as you could have Yeah, that's, I, if you told me before the stretch we were going to win seven out of eight, I would have said, sign me up, I'll take it. <laughs> now, and you can pick who we lose to, but I don't care. Uh, let's just win seven out of eight. Uh, 
it was nice that we were able to do that. Uh, and they were and they're tough teams, you know. This stretch we just went through, those were good teams that came through here. And uh, for us to end up that way, I'm very, very happy with our guys. Was there any concern being at home that maybe some letdown over the stretch No, I don't know if we've had a letdown, really. You know, we can't. Like, you just can't right now. It's, it's the West. You let down, you're out, you know. And so you just can't. You know, the road trip, uh, the next four, three of the four are subpar teams. How important is it to hammer down on these teams? It's just on the road, though. You know, it's a reason teams that do well at home. And so we don't look at the teams. We, we just go in one at a time and see what we can do. You know, we go in everywhere and think we can win. That's one great thing about this team. Uh, they play well on the road, so we got to continue to do that. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> You're just going to sit there. Oh, Doc, congrats on a very good season. And like, as they said, you're almost like the fourth seed. Who, who do you think is your ideal playoff opponent? Have you started thinking about that? <laughs> good question. That's a great question. You should never ask a coach that question. Shame on you, son. Um, I don't know. I don't have, I have whoever we're playing is the perfect opponent. That's as political of an answer that I could give. Uh, yeah, we don't pick. You know, we're, not, we're not good enough to pick who we want to play. Yeah, uh, I can I can name some teams, but they're not going to be in the playoffs. <laughs> uh, I imagine it's difficult to get traded during your rookie season, but it seems like Landry Shamit has transitioned very well to being here. Uh, I know we didn't really fill up the stat sheets today, stat sheet today, but how big has his production been? He's been huge. Time, He's so given us another option. Uh, you know, we we made so many plays tonight off of his action. You know, because you can tell the whole team is following him. And you have a weak side action. Everybody's over there following Sham. Gal's wide open, you know. Um, so he's been he's been big for us. We needed that type of player on our team, and we didn't have that. And so adding Sham to our team has been very beneficial. Uh, so after that fourth quarter, when you were up by 17 towards the beginning of the quarter, and saw that lead diminish down to three towards the end of the final minute or so, even though you ended up winning the game, how do you plan to adjust? Well, we don't adjust. We just keep getting better. And I, I tell you, it, it happened early. Once it got to eight, it was a game anyway. You know, but I thought uh, we made a couple of turnovers down in that stretch when we had that lead where we could have put them away. And what we were talking about is one of those games where you felt like you could put them away and we just didn't. Uh, we'll watch the film. Some of the plays we should have made, we didn't. I think our guys know that. How far do you have? Is it uh, at all relieving that LeBron's probably out of the playoffs, or do you, do you wish he was there for the challenge of competing against one of the best players in the league? I don't care. I, I really don't. Like, uh, I, will, 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 I just want to play in the playoffs, and whoever they bring, let's, let's play them. And, you know, LeBron's on that team, we'll play that, or whoever else. Uh, I think our guys don't really care. They just want to play. And they don't care about anyone else either, which is nice. Hi, what's your mentality with the team from now until Friday's game? Uh, rest, hopefully. Uh, our guys heard that. We're going to fly all the way to, to Cleveland uh, and then get off a plane at 7 in the evening and go straight to practice on Thursday uh, and then get ready for Cleveland. You know, so, But this is a long season. It's late in the season, and rest right now is, is huge for us. What can you say about the culture and the system that you have in place where you can have the roster turnaround that you've had, losing Tobias Harris and adding a Landry Shamit or an Abusa Zubox and still maintaining the same success? It, it tells you that um, we're doing a lot of good things you know, off the floor as well. Uh, and culture is everything, and, and, and we have that right now. Uh, I think all the guys who have come in, uh, Lawrence and, and the entire staff, there's so many people supporting them, you know, um, making the transition easy for them. And then all talk, everybody in our organization, all we talk about is wins. We don't talk about anything else but being a winner. I think that's been good for all the new guys, uh, especially some of the vets. I think have been very surprised uh, with the environment. I think that's good for us. All right, guys. No. Um, how far uh, realistically do you have Marquette going in the end? I have Marquette winning it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Mar Marquette, will, Marquette will make a run, okay? Y'all want me to see double eight predictions? Marquette will make a deeper run than people think. Uh, UC Irvine will win the first game. And that, I'm going to stop there.